So how do we calculate G in the first place? Um, we're usually only interested in and only able to calculate a difference or a change. So what we do is we arbitrarily set standard free energy to zero for elements. Okay? It's an elemental molecule, O2 for oxygen, H2 for hydrogen, let it be zero. And then we can do everything relative to the elements or everything relative to zero. Okay. Another way to think about this would be um, when I think about like science can't really have absolutes. If you think about gene upregulation and PCR, there are ways to try to get these absolute concentrations of your genes. I don't really trust any of those reports or any of that data. What you normally do is have some sort of control and everything is, did I upregulate relative to that? How big was there a change relative to some baseline? Because again, getting like total numbers of these things is just really difficult to do accurately. Okay. So now we can define something, standard free energy of formation. So again, you're gonna wanna take some time to get yourself comfortable with the way this notation looks and the way this language is phrased. Okay, so before we had sort of a standard free energy change and there was no lowercase f notation here, standard free energy of formation, okay? We have our little degree symbol here means standard. We have our lowercase f, our subscript is of formation. And what this means is that I'm looking at the standard free energy change that would result from converting stoichiometric amounts of pure elements into one mole of the molecule I'm interested in. Okay, so if I wanna make one mole of CO2, I'm talking about putting together one mole of carbon and one mole of oxygen, okay? Carbon is elemental carbon, oxygen is elemental oxygen. Those are both at zero free energy. I set them at zero arbitrarily. And so if I wanna get sort of the free energy of carbon dioxide, I need to use this free energy change of formation going from my elements to my CO2, okay? So graphically, this might look like something pure carbon, pure hydrogen, nitrogen or oxygen would be here. In making water out of hydrogen and oxygen, um, there's some change in free energy of formation of making this water, in this case we're saying spontaneously making water out of hydrogen and oxygen gas um, because it's a negative change. Um, this is for leucine, glucose, sucrose. Um, so again, this gives you maybe some relative scale on how stable these things are, how likely it is to make glucose as opposed to having elemental carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. There's also this table in your book, 9.1, so you may be asked to pull values off of it in order to calculate something. Okay. Um, it would always be given to you on an exam. It's not on the equation sheet, but I just put it next to the problem if you needed it. We can calculate standard free energy change, our delta G, um, from our standard free energy of formation. Okay, and so this is going to be the sum of the energies of formations of our products minus the sum of the energies of formations of our reactants. We know that to get delta G, we want sort of our free energy of our products minus our free energy of our reactants. We can't get that directly, so we'll <coughs> calculate it um, from our, like going from elements to that product, elements to that reactant. Okay. And if we have more than one, we may need to sum them up. Again, it's just convention that we let the molar free energy of all our elemental molecules be zero at standard state. We can write, this was our, our basic Gibbs equation was G equals H minus T S. We can rewrite that as delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. We can rewrite that in standard state. We can rewrite that in standard formation. You can apply these different terms and these different conditions to this equation if you need to. Okay? And in this case, we would have standard change in enthalpy cues you in that this is the term we're talking about, standard change in entropy. Enthalpy of formation would mean you're interested in this term. Entropy of formation, I'm interested in this term. So again, this is just me trying to say, hey, when you're reading these problems and you're being asked for something, 
these are sort of the terminology that'll let you know what you're being asked for. 